Because I'm looking at a whole bunch of broken people. How many here are not broken? Raise your hand. Oh, there you go. A whole lot of broken people. It's talking about marriage, but it's also the church. So we're going to have a church joining. But before we have the church joining, I want to talk for a few minutes. I need to find my clicker. Uh, I want to talk about church membership for a minute. Remember, we're a bunch of broken people. Amen. Get your Bibles out. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Also, was because of circumstances beyond her control, Vicki could not be here today. She just told me a couple of days ago. She said, we're going to not go through the whole, all of this next week. We are going to go, we're all going to let, invite her to the fellowship next week. And so, if there's anybody else that decided that they wanted to be uh, in this, uh, they can. If they weren't here this week, they can be here next week. Amen. God is so good. And everything's going crazy. It does. There we go. Praise God. All right, get your Bibles out. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. You know, I told y'all a couple weeks ago I had done y'all an injustice because I wasn't speaking much on stewardship like I should, and the Lord got on me about it. There's something else that he got on me about, and, and uh, that is church membership, because I, you know, had been members of the church for me to minister to you, and I minister to a bunch of people all over the place and do a lot of counseling for people that aren't members of the church, but when it comes down to church and church membership, it does matter. And so I want you to know that. It's not, you're not going to, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't prevent me from ministering to you. It doesn't prevent you from participating by not being a member. But being a member does have its advantages. Amen? Amen. It's kind of like, uh, if, if anyone, if, look, if, if, if uh, I went to any one of my kids' house today and it was dinner time, I'm pretty sure they'd say, come on in there and grab a plate. Amen? But if I just wanted one on the street knocking on the door stepped in, I'm not sure that somebody would sit and tell me to come on in and grab something to eat. Why? Because I'm not, I'm not a member of the family. I don't even know me. So membership does have its advantages. Amen. So, so here we go. First Corinthians, y'all stand for the reading of the word. First Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry, and you are God's building. Think about that. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation, and another build thereon. But let every man take heed how he build thereupon. So here we go. Watch this. Oh, and for another foundation, no other foundation can be laid but that which is Jesus Christ. So here we go. Watch. We are laborers together, which means actually we toil together. We go through the good times, we go through the bad times. We have awesome things, we have not so awesome things happen. In our lives, just in the last 36 hours, I've heard some very tragic news from many families, not just in this church, but uh, in, our, in our own family and other things. There's just been some, some crazy things going on. And, and you know what? That's life. Life happens sometimes. You, there's a song that talks about uh, things happening to us at the speed of life, which is very fast. But, but, but here we are. We're, together. we're laborers together with God. <laughs> here God's husbandry. In other words, they're building us up. And as he's building us up, we are God's building. So we're God's building individually, but we're also God's building collectively. That's what the church is. We're all a bunch of broken people. There's nobody in here. Not one person in here is perfect. None. Absolutely none. Look at somebody and say, you're not perfect. Now you look back at that person and say, you're not either. Nobody is perfect. Everybody has their faults. Everybody has to have God help them. Everybody has to have God work in their life because we are all broken people that God puts together for a common purpose. And so I thank God that He puts us together for that common purpose. Amen. So, so y'all, let's pray. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you, God, for this day. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be together, to worship together in spirit and in truth. And I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint. Help us, God, to put away every distraction. Help us, God, put away anything that's going to take our mind off the message. And help us keep our mind on what you're doing for us today, God. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. And church said, Amen. 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 You be seated and wait down and get somebody a high five and tell them God's moving. Amen, amen, amen. Now remember, after this, we're going to have our membership uh, uh, induction, so to speak, with the door open. The whole time is just called the door opening. The church door opening. Now, I read a thing the other day that said, uh, 
Uh, if, if you took all the people who attended church each Sunday and laid them in the end, they'd be a lot more comfortable. <laughs> Anybody here ever gone to sleep in church? <laughs> I've been in some services so important that my leg, my leg went to sleep and the rest of them got jealous. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, God is so good. Okay, so, so, so here it is. What's the big deal about church membership? I'm going to do it quickly, so this is not going to be a long, drawn-out thing. It's going to be quick, but I did put a lot of stuff up there. I want you to see it. Uh, and any time, somebody was asking me about a, one of the seven ways to praise. Any time you see anything up here, and or including the whole sermon, if you want a copy of it, you can get it. And if you can wait before the, after the service, if you can wait for me to get back to it, I'll go and get you a copy right then so we won't forget. But anything, anything you see up here, you're welcome to get a copy of it because I want you to have it in your hands because it helps during the week. If you can pull this out, it might not necessarily depend on your memory. Amen. I don't know about you, but I can remember as good as always good. Just my forgetters getting better. Amen. I like what I like what Benny said. Benny said, I'm not bragging, but I can't think of anything I can't forget. <laughs> I had a trouble remembering his name. I was like, who said, said that? It was Benny. Oh, that's right. Benny said that. Okay. Now, now, now in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Word of God, Ecclesia, in the Greek, is what the church is. The Ecclesia. Amen? Now, now, now the Ecclesia actually is, is the Greek original word for church. What it means is to call out ones. It doesn't mean the building. It doesn't mean uh, denomination. It means the call out ones. Amen? So, so the notice being called out of something, and what are we called out of? The world. And we are called into something, and what is that? We're called into the church. Amen? So we're being called out of the world, into the church, out of the body of the world, and into the body of Christ. A bunch of broken people pulled together with separate uh, abilities and separate gifts that were get put together and working together it's an amazing thing that what, what can happen. Matter of fact, you can't be called out of one thing without being called into another. Remember that. God never calls us out of one thing without placing us in another. Amen? So, so again, we're called out of the world, called out of the life of sin, called out of, of destruction into life, into life everlasting. God's doing something special. So, we were put together so that we as a group can make a difference in each other's lives, but we can also make a difference in people's lives outside the body of Christ. So now, uh, we've got some military guys in here. Uh, I've never been in the military, but I, I wanted to go, but, but, but when I was colorblind, I couldn't do what I wanted to do, and so I, I told myself, I reckon I won't do that. Uh, but still, there's always been that little thing inside of me. What would it be like if I hadn't joined the military. But then I told the I told the Paul Funeral Home when I died, they were doing the flag ceremony. I said, when I die, I want a flag right over my coffin too. And they said, an American flag? I said, no, a Christian flag. I said, I've been a soldier of the war for a long time. So I said, I want a Christian flag draped over my coffin. They said, okay, consider it done. Amen. So so uh, uh, so here it is. Think about these dog types. Now, these dog tags are some specific things. These dog tags are necessary. These dog tags actually, uh, these especially right here, they identify you with a, a, a church membership itself. Church membership identifies you with the body of local believers. So, so just like the soldiers. The soldiers, they will wear a dog tag. They wear these dog tags to identify them as a soldier and identify where they serve and even tell some things about them. It's a little bit of information that can be used in order to keep up with this person. But, but much in the same way, uh, our, our membership is our ID tag. Our membership tells us that, that, that we belong. Amen? Our, our membership identifies us with a, a group of believers. It identifies us with a group of believers with common doctrine. It identifies us with believers that are going in the same direction. And, and the world today needs to know where we stand. That's what, that's what baptism is about. Did you know that? Not only is baptism symbolic of the old man going down and being buried and the new man rising up, but in the early church, it was a symbol of now I belong to the church. And
And when they were being baptized, when they come up, they were losing their homes, they were losing their jobs, their family was even tearing up their birth certificates because they didn't want them to be a part of the body of Christ. And so they were making a bold stand by being baptized. Likewise, when we become a member of the body of Christ, we are going to have some people that don't want to have anything to do with us. They're going to want to kind of push us aside until they get convicted, and then you'll find them uh, doing the same thing coming to you. So church membership makes a statement, and that is, I belong not only to the body of Christ, but I belong to this body of Christ, and I stand with this body of Christ for what they believe in, and we're going to work together. So it identifies us with the local body. But not only does it identify us uh, 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 with the, the local body, but also identifies your commitment. You know, I think about commitment these days. Commitment is something used to meant a lot. There's a lot of people that were committed to a lot of things back in the day, and in this day and time that we live in, I honestly, I get kind of spooked when somebody says, listen, this, when somebody comes up to me and says, I'm committed, you can count on me, I trust you. But when I hear that, I get spooked on the inside because all through the years, I have heard, I'm committed, you can count on me, I'll be there, and I'll watch them drop away like flies. It's important that we understand that commitment is not something that we play with. It's not something we just throw around and say I'm committed and not mean it. To be committed means I am committed. Anybody's got a child in here, you're committed to that child. You'll take care of that child. You're there for that child. Come what, what may, you're there for that child. The same way when you're committed to, to, to anything in your life, you need to let people know that commitment is something very powerful uh, in, in your life. So, so, so church membership identifies your commitment. You know, our culture teaches, you know, a, a limited commitment. Well, I'm committed to my marriage unless things get kind of rough. And I, I, I've heard people say, well, you know, like people talk about their homes. This is my starter home. This is my five-year home. I've heard that lately. The, the, uh, the, whatever it's called, do-it-yourself network and, and all the garden shows and all that, they have ruined us because now people say, well, now this is my five-year home or this is my, my starter home. And now they're saying things like, this is, I've heard it, this is my starter marriage. I've heard it. I'm a marriage counselor. Trust me. I've heard it. Or I've heard, well, if this don't work out, I've already got, this is plan A, but I've already got plan B. I've already figured out who my next person is going to be if this one don't work out. I had somebody years, years, years ago, I mean years ago, y'all wouldn't know them, years, years, years ago, there was a guy that had a girlfriend and his wife, and he said, and his wife said, can we go talk to, we heard about Brother David, can we go find him and talk to him? He said, okay. So he sits down and talks to me, and I said, okay, what do y'all want to do? First I talked to him by himself, and he said, well, I'm kind of thinking God knows that I'm unhappy, so God doesn't want me with this woman, God's found me another woman. I said, you're married, don't you know you're not supposed to be happy? <laughs> All the time. I'm playing that part. And so, 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 so the guy says, well, my wife wants us to get back together. I said, well, that sounds like a good thing because God isn't is tearing up marriages and tearing up families. And so we get talking, and as we're talking, we get together, and me and his wife are talking, and he and we're all sitting there talking, and he would never tell his girlfriend, I said, this is only work with three people. That's you and your wife and God. That fourth person has got to go if you want this to work. And so she was very patient with her husband. Well, I let him let this woman go. Finally, one day, he came into the office, and I said, they're sitting there. And I said, well, did you ever tell the girl it's over? And he said, well, I'm thinking about it. I want to. And I said, well, hold on just a minute. In the office, I pulled out my phone. I said, what's your girlfriend's number? He said, oh, it's 252 he said, 777 and 777. He said, 7861 and 786. Well, he said, oh, what are you doing? I said, you said you can't find time. We got time now. We break it up. And he said, would you please quit calling her? I said, well, you won't. I will. Your wife wants you to. You say you want to. The woman knows you can't be with her, so I'm going to help you out. What did you say it was? 252, 777, 718. He said, please stop. I said, well, dude, I mean, you, you can dig 
thinking bad, but you ain't thinking bad here. You, he said, I'll tell you what. Look at his watch. If you give me a chance tonight, I'll do it. And you ain't got to worry about it. But sure enough, they did. The people got together. They were happy. And there were people said whenever they saw them together, they were holding hands and kissing in public. And they were so awesome. They said, and they wanted to work in the ministry together. It was amazing. But commitment. They became committed to the marriage instead of committed to other junk. Let me tell you something. Commitment's not based on my happiness. Commitment's not based on my, uh, if I'm miserable. Commitment's based on I'm committed no matter what. You can count on me. You know, Uncle Ralph, the other day, Uncle Ralph called me, and I was sitting in a slate stone. It was 10 o'clock at night, I was working on a sermon, and my uncle calls me and says, I need some wood taken out of the back porch. She's got cancer. She's got any wood taken and put him on the wood box. I said, well, Uncle Ralph, can I do it tomorrow after church? I come by after church and do it. He said, no, I need it tonight. I'm cold. I said, well, there's somebody else around there that can do it. He said, I've called. All the people that told me they were going to help me. I can't get a hold of them. <sighs> I'm working on the sermon. But I told him, I said, if you ever need me, I'll be there. So what I did was I got in my car and I'm driving all the way from Washington to the Blossom Track and I walked in his door. He said, you know what? I forgot you, Baloo. I thought you lived across the street. I said, no, Uncle Ralph, I live across the town, the next town. And he said, he said, well, I wish you hadn't come. I said, I told you, if you need me, I'll be here. I said, so end the story. Again, let me tell you something, commitment. So, so we teach a limited commitment in marriage, in friendship, on our job, at school. Whatever we do is a, a limited thing. But you know what? Christ is all about commitment. He's all about it. Matter of fact, he says in Ephesians, he says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Gave himself. The cross shows commitment. Christ loved me when I was unlovable. Christ committed to my life when I weren't even ready to give my life to him. Commitment. So, 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 church, uh, church, so church membership identifies your commitment, and this commitment provides opportunity. Now, this is so awesome. It provides opportunity for you to be part of the spiritual family. And as a spirit, part of the spiritual family, we all kind of go through things together. We, 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 have, we solve problems together. We, we, we even help each other and lift each other up in prayer. I love that thing now that's, that we've got on the, 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 the text message system that goes out because yesterday I got a prayer request that went out. Also got something reminding us about the, the supper tonight. All this stuff's going out on these, on these text messages because I'm part of the body. I got a call to the night I was uh, getting ready to leave. We we're going to go uh, help uh, uh, Don and Gene do something after service. And and I, and I got a, a, a friend of mine who's on Mighty Army. He's a preacher friend. Well, about a month ago, he wrote to me and said, Who is this? I said, It's Pastor David. Who is this? Playing with him. I probably even said Gordo or something. Something. I was playing with him. <clears throat> Nothing ever came about of it. I'm getting ready to leave to go to Don and Jeannie's and it's ringing. So I picked up and called the pastor by name. I said, what's happening, dude? And it weren't him. And I said, I'm sorry, who is this? He says, this is Pastor David. I said, this is Pastor David. He said, this is such and such. He said, I just want you to know, uh, uh, at the first of the year, I bought this phone. And this is my new number. I've had it for several months. And he said, the very first morning, this body you already getting in. And he said, it hit the spot. He said, the next morning, it hit for it working. It hit the spot. He said, so I sent a text to you and said, who is this? You said, Pastor David, you cut up some. And I just kept on, I didn't write you back. He said, because I was scared that you were going to take me off the mighty army once you found out I was somebody else. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to take you off. You're fine. You're fine. Just stay on there. He said, please don't take me off. He said, man, it's me God. I said, buddy, I told you, I was committed to this. You'll be fine. It'll be okay. He said, he said, thank you, man. And then again, he said, please don't take me off my army. I said, I'm not going to take you off my army, man. I said, matter of fact, if you want, put your friends on it. We'll put them on it, too. He said, okay, good. I'm so scared you were going to take me off because I want one of your members. I said, well, guess what you're a member of now? He said, well, I said, you're a member of my army. He said, thanks, man. Again, look, look. See, see in this environment we're in, we get to talk to one another. We get to care for one another, nurture one another. It's 
it's amazing because now we're sharing things. You know, uh, 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 it makes it better for me because a lot of times I have discovered over the years that 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 my church family has actually been closer to me than my all my regular family, as far as my outer, my, you know, my brothers and sisters and stuff, because they don't share the same necessarily the same Christian goals that I share, and they might not even share the same. Some of them may not even be in church, and so they don't quite understand. I try to talk to them, and they don't listen, or they try to tell me something that doesn't make sense. But I've got y'all. We're a family. We're it's awesome. We can talk to one another. I like 1 Corinthians 12, 26 says, if one member suffers, all the parts share the suffering. If one member is honored, all the members share in the enjoyment of it. And 1, Corinthians, or 1 John 3, 16 says, but by uh, this we come to know progressively to recognize, to perceive, and to understand the essential love that he laid down his own life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for those who are our brothers and sisters in him. So it identifies our commitment. Next, I love this part, that I'm all about teams. It identifies you as, as a team player. You know, the... Uh, uh, there was a lone ranger, but you know he died on his own bullet. Amen? There's no lone rangers. We have to be together. We have to, 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 to be part of something. Everybody that's in your psyche, everybody has to be part of something. That's why we have families, because we're part of something. That's why we have outer families, inner families. We have circles of friends. We have inner circle of friends. That's because we all, every last one of us, have to have that sense of belonging. We have to be part of something, and in order for us to really be fulfilled, we have to be part of something bigger than us. And so because we have to be part of something bigger than us, here we go, look, look, did you know that all of us is smarter than one of us? Amen. All of us has is, is, is got prayer power more than just one of us, got more prayer power. All of us have more faith than just one of us. So, so I like to think of membership as like a covenant. Because I can get a membership, you know, I can sit in 25, sit in the box top and become a membership of the Kellogg's Breakfast Club. But a covenant, the word covenant means to cut. It means to cost you something. It means it's more than just out of the mouth. Now it's part of you. And so when you become part of the church family now, it, 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 it's that covenant. And, 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 and one part of that covenant emphasizes the importance of working together for kingdom purposes. Remember, there's no Lone Ranger. Matter of fact, I, I like the Lone Ranger, but you know what? Uh, I, I found out uh, every now and then I like to be the Lone Ranger, but I can't ever find Tonto. That means he's always busy somewhere else. And so the church family becomes God's laboratory. Did you know that? Here's where we learn how to interact. Here's how we learn to get along with our family. Here's how we learn, you know, uh, in, in sociology. Uh, I'm taking so, one of my, my second sociology class right now, and it talks about socialization. It talks about five main socializations in every person's life. And the number one socialization is our family. They teach us how to get along with people. And they teach us how to, how to interact with one another. And so a lot of people have problems because they're... A uh, 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 family may have been dysfunctional. Let me just tell you something. Did you know that every family is dysfunctional? Did you know that? Matter of fact, sometimes I think the lips put the funk in dysfunctional. <laughs> every family has a part of its own dysfunctionality, but you have the socialization. Then, then you have school. Think about it. You have school, then you have work. And then you have your inner circle of friends, your outer circle of friends, that's socialization. But then you have re-socialization. Re-socialization is when now you're taught to do something different, to come about it in a different way. Now, now work is like that, college is like that re-socialization. But one of the biggest things for re-socialization is the church. Once I started in the church, I learned a whole different life. You know, before I started in the church, I didn't know that guys were still be hugging each other. Before I started the church, I didn't tell a bunch of people I loved them all the time. Before I started the church, I didn't know that there was a big family. We could hold hands, we could pray together. I, that stuff didn't happen. But that re-socialization is because now I'm part of that team. So now I'm in this environment. And in this environment, uh, I, I get a chance to practice unselfish love. And I get a chance to, 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 to show my commitment to one another. I'm almost through. Somebody say Amen. 
If y'all start talking, I'll be through faster. Look at these good looking people. 
and people are needing, you know, uh, if you can talk to that person that's had a very strong accident in their family or they're having uh, uh, some bad news or they've had a house burned down or they've had, a, had somebody die, something, if you can respond to them in the first 24 hours, you can actually help that person a lot. But, you, but, but in order to help that person, you need to really be trained if you want to really do this without causing. you got to know things not to say. You know what I'm saying? Because there's an old standby that everybody says that it's not what you say. God's got a plan. You know, uh, well, how come God allowed my baby to die? Well, God's got a plan. Well, you know, that's not helping them right now. Okay, there's other things you've got to be able to say. Or a house burns down or whatever. So, but it's going to be open to anybody, anybody, any age, within reason. If you've got to be able, you've got to, be able to comprehend it. So I said teenager up. Uh, come on in. We're going to have it coming soon. Uh, and and what I'll do is is I, I'll probably make you I maybe make out some little tests and, and let you fill out the test and after you fill out the test and you pass it I'll I'll make you a little certification that you're on the Edward Crisis Response Team and you can use it anywhere anywhere you don't have to use it just here you can use it anywhere but it's very important I was at the doctor's office while she, while Bethany was getting her biopsy and getting tested and I was studying I was getting certification and the recertification. In it and, 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 and more started speaking to me and said, you know, get your church. Get your church to be involved in this because one of us is not as effective as all of us. One of us can't be in the same place all of us can be. Okay? So it's very important. So be praying about it. It's, only, it's not going to happen in the next week or so. It may be within the next month or so. But we'll, we're going to go ahead and start it and start moving toward it. And, and it's only probably going to be like a 12 hour, 12 hour training. It's not like you've got to train for, for weeks on the end. It may be a, uh, uh, a couple of Tuesday nights, uh, or maybe three or four Tuesday nights, but we're going to do it. It's going to be good. And those who can't be on Tuesday night, I'll fix it the way that we can make it even work again. We can do it on Sunday afternoons. There's ways we can make this happen. If that's put Sunday afternoons work better, Sunday after church, if that works better. But it's important. Because we are God's hands extended. Okay? We make the difference. And, and we can make so much difference in a person's life just by being there in a crisis situation. Especially within the tw first 24 to 36 hours, we can make the difference. All right? All right. Do you love the Lord? Amen. 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 To make sure that you welcome everybody, and y'all make sure that they've got your name down. Uh, talk to Sierra; she makes sure everybody's name. There was there was ten, right? You got all ten names. Okay, well we got your names then. But just in case, walk by to Sierra and say, "You got my name," and, and then we can get you a little a membership certificate. All right. Uh, congratulations! It's really awesome. Y'all, y'all were beautiful. Every last one of you are beautiful, and that's awesome. There was one really. There was two really shine, really shined out. I have to say, though, one was wearing a bow tie, <laughs> and the other one looked like her papa. Big <laughs> 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 all good. All the time. All the time. Of course, she wears her hair different wearing mine. I mean, you got well. I was doing really good. Here we go. Y'all stand.